Isaiah chapter 11, Isaiah chapter 11, and in our blue Bibles, this is page 1076, 1076 in our blue Bibles, Isaiah chapter 11, <clears throat> and uh, to begin, we'll read uh, just verses uh, 1 and 2, but I'll speak from the whole of uh, verses uh, 1 to, uh, to 12. Perhaps one of the most beautiful and hopeful passages in the whole of scriptures. And uh, I think you'll understand why I say that uh, as, we, uh, as we go through the passage. 
but to, to begin, chapter 11 and uh, verse 1. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Father God, we thank you for these words of yours, for these words you have spoken through your servant uh, Isaiah and uh, written down for us so that uh, we could receive from them also. We thank you for the branch that you have brought into the world in fulfillment of this prophecy. And we thank you for the salvation that uh, he has made for us and that uh, we will someday enjoy uh, because of your sure word, your sure promises, and our only and your Savior and Son, Christ Jesus. And so I pray you will uh, encourage us with these words and, uh, Lord, speak hope into our hearts through them. And I pray in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. The branch, the shoot, the sapling, if you will, it is that tender new growth that springs up unexpectedly and wonderfully from a sawed off old stump and even grows to become a strong and flourishing tree. The Bible draws from the inspiring rise of the shoot from the stump to foretell the coming of the Messiah, the Christ, the Sa and the Savior who will bring everlasting peace and righteousness to the whole world. Revelation 5, verse 5, speaks about the triumphant messianic branch as the root of David and lion of the tribe of Judah. The latter Old Testament uh, prophet uh, Zechariah calls the messianic servant of the Lord the branch. And earlier in the Hebrew Scriptures, the prophet Jeremiah foresees the days of restoration for Israel and speaks about the Deliverer as a righteous branch. But the earliest prophecy about the branch who will spring from David and who will one day reign in righteousness over the world is here in Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. Isaiah prophesies in verse 1 about the father of the righteous King David, whom the Lord God has some 200 years earlier promised an everlasting line of sons to rule over Israel. In the prophecy of chapter 10 above, Isaiah has foreseen that Almighty Yahweh will surely punish the kingdom of Assyria that has lately ravaged Israel and Judah and will cut down the oppressor like a great axeman telling uh, or felling a whole forest of lofty trees. But from the tree stump or the stalk of Jesse and the line of sons from King David will rise a fresh shoot of growth and a new heir to the kingdom. And from his roots, verse 1 adds, a branch, or in Hebrew, a netzer, will bear fruit or produce a rule of righteousness and goodness. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, verse 2 foretells, about the branch from King David and his father Jesse, like the Spirit of Yahweh has come upon earlier leaders and kings of Israel and endued them for their appointed service, the Spirit will rest 
or remain on the Jesse branch and equip him for rulership. The graces or gifts the Spirit of God will endow the ruler from David will be the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. All the virtues the branch will need for an everlasting and godly sort of rule. And verse 3 says about the ruler to come, he will delight in the fear of the Lord. The spirit endued branch, branch will love and take pleasure in knowing the people of his kingdom revere Yahweh Almighty. And from his profound devotion to justice and fairness, the Jesse branch will not judge by what he sees uh, or decide by what he hears with his ears. He will not judge people by mere appearances or decide cases by unreliable hearsay. But, verse 4 declares about the ruler from David, with righteousness he will judge the needy, so they receive what rightly belongs to them. And with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth, so they are not neglected and left to poverty. More fearsomely, for evildoers, the judge from Jesse will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked, with the mere words of his mouth. And the simple breath from his lips, the Jesse judge will powerfully strike the earth and potently slay the wicked for their wickedness. In verse 5, righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. Like the belt and sash that fasten the clothing of a man and signify his nobility, so the branch from Jesse will be known and distinguished from all others for his surpassing righteousness and faithfulness. So righteous, so blessed, and so happy will be the reign of the ruler from David that we read next in verses 6 to 9 that the whole earth and all its creatures will enjoy perfect peace and beautiful harmony. In verse 6, the wolf will live with the lamb. The vicious predator lying quietly with the helpless lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the compulsive hunter resting with the playful kid goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. No violence, terror, or alarm separating them. And a little child will lead them. Not only will the small human be safe among the beasts, but he will even lead them. In verse 7, the cow will feed with the bear, quietly grazing in the same pasture. Their young will lie down together, the cub and calf resting side by side. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. Instead of devouring flesh, the lion will satisfy itself with straw, like the ox has always done. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. Verse 8 further foretells about the age to come of the ruler from Jesse. The ancient sin-incited enmity, enmity between the serpent and the offspring of the woman that we learn about from Genesis 3 will be finished, and children will carelessly play near the holes of their old adversaries. 
They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. Verse 9, and visions about the era of peace under the Jesse branch. On holy Mount Zion, where the ruler will rule from, from and his peace will preside, neither man nor beast will harm or destroy. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The revelation of Yahweh God will so fill the earth that on Mount Zion and throughout the whole world, his creatures will live in peace and quiet with one another and in fear and reverence toward the Lord Almighty. In that day, verse 10 foresees, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, not just for Israel and Judah, but for all peoples of the world. The royal Jesse root will become a banner and a royal ensign for all to assemble around. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. His place of rest will be Mount Zion and Jerusalem. It will be glorious because of the presence of the righteous ruler who dwells there. And to Zion, the nations will come to seek his great wisdom. But about the people of Judah and Israel, verse 11 assures that, their, that Yahweh, their God, will regather them and restore them to the land of their promised inheritance. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the remnant that is left of his people. From Assyria, from Lower Egypt, or the Lower Nile River, from Upper Egypt, or the Upper or Southern Nile, from Cush, or Ethiopia, and beyond Assyria to the east from Elam, from Babylonia, to the north from Hamath or Syria, and from the islands of the sea like Cyprus and Crete. Wherever the Judeans and Israelites have been taken into exile or have fled from invaders, the Lord God will bring them back to the land of Israel and Jerusalem. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel, verse 12 happily proclaims. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. Praise the Lord. a royal banner for the nations and for Israel to gather around, a restorer for creation and its many creatures, a ruler of peace and righteousness, and a branch from Jesse. This is whom our Son of God, our Son of David, and Son of God, Christ Jesus, is destined to become. Indeed, Jesus is the promised branch from Jesse. This is what the Gospels of Matthew and Luke and their genealogies take care to document, that through his adoptive father Joseph, Jesus was the lawful son of David and his father Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, Isaiah prophesied some 700 years before Jesus was born. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. And the branch and the shoot from the wrought stock of Jesse and the line of David has sprung up and has borne the fruit of godly kingship like no other man, Jesus, son of Joseph. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, Isaiah foretold about the branch, and the Holy Spirit from the Heavenly Father surely did rest upon the son of Joseph. At the time of his baptism by John, the Spirit in the form of a dove 
lighted upon Jesus, then led him full of the Holy Spirit, Luke says, and in the power of the Spirit, Luke also says, into a ministry of healing the sick and teaching about the final kingdom of God. In his instructions to his disciples and followers that we have written down for us in the Gospels and that the whole world still reads and reveres, we see the spirit and inspiration that Isaiah prophesied the righteous branch would have. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of of the Lord. So yes, already the promised branch from Jesse has arisen. From the root of David, the shoot has sprung. And since we have already seen and known the foretold righteous ruler, we can be sure he will come again in the majesty and power Isaiah has also foreseen. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, the prophet has assured us, or decide by what he hears with his ears. How often do our worldly judges and officers judge by the color of our skin? How many people believe the gossip and slander they hear? Not so in the kingdom to come under Judge Jesus. And his righteous dominion will begin with the just judgment of all unjust judges, rulers, officials, and all ungodly people in the fearsome way Isaiah has warned about. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. This is the reason the book of Revelation, chapter 19, envisions the conquering Christ returning like a rider on a white war horse, leading the hosts of heaven and blasting the godless with his mighty word. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike the nations, Revelation says. He will rule them with an iron scepter. As Isaiah has also written about the ruler to come, Righteousness will be his belt. With that righteousness, he will judge the unrighteous nations. And faithfulness, the sash around his waist. In faithfulness, Christ will rule righteously and judge justly forever after. And what an age... That will be. The righteousness, peace, wisdom, and understanding that the branch from Jesse will bring into this world will not only redeem and heal humankind, but will also remake and renew creation in the wonderful and beautiful ways Isaiah has foreseen. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. Predators and prey, dwelling together in peace and quiet. Because the wolf and leopard no longer hunt and kill. A truly new order. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and the little child will lead them. The very picture of peace and safety. A small child leading the king of beasts, a tender calf, and a fattened cow into green pasture. For us now in this present world, the scene is scarcely imaginable. Who would let their child wander in the field with such animals? But in the world to come and the age of the Prince of Peace, the cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. 
and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The lion eating straw. Only the lion of Judah will persuade the beast to change his diet. In the age to come, the effects of human sin and the curse upon creation and its creatures will be overturned and reversed, so that among the animals there will be peace and good naturedness, and between them and humans there will be patience and goodwill. The infant, the infant, will play near the hole of the cobra. And the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. Only in the kingdom to come. Because it will be the age of redemption and the restoration of our whole sin-cursed and long-afflicted world. In the way that Isaiah has long ago foreseen and so beautifully foretold. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. Jerusalem will finally be a safe and peaceful city and a place of true and lasting holiness. For, the prophecy explains, the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The overflowing understanding of the almighty I am will bring godly order and peace to the earth and all within it. And the knowledge of the Lord God filling the world and renewing creation will also overflow the nations of humanity and bring peace and oneness to all peoples of all ancestors through the long ago prophesied branch. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. Finally, a ruler, a governor, and a prince who will truly unite the nations. Not in the way of injustice, ungodliness, and blasphemy, but in reverence, right doing, and justice for every man and every woman. And finally also, redemption, restoration, and lasting shalom for the Jewish people. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand to reclaim the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. The return, or in Hebrew, Aliyah, of the Jewish people, that we already see happening in our time, will be full and complete then. And this final exodus of Israelites and Judeans will be because they will understand who their Mashiach is and will come to worship under the banner of Christ, as the prophet has foretold about him and all his people. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. O oh, glorious day, under the banner, banner of the Jesse branch, Christ Jesus. <clears throat> the prophecy of Isaiah about the age of righteousness and peace under the rule of the Jesse branch, Christ Jesus, has inspired many fine paintings and beautiful illustrations. Not the least of these is 
The Peaceable Kingdom by Edward Hicks about the year 1833. In the foreground, on the right, on a green hillside, beneath a leafy tree are the beasts and the children of the prophetic vision. The wolf and the lamb, the leopard and the kid goat, the calf, the lion, the fattened cow, and the little child leading them, the cow and bear feeding together, the cub and calf resting, the lion and ox both eating straw, and children playing by the nest of the serpent, all together in peace and happy calm. In the lower left background of the painting is a depiction of the Pennsylvania Commonwealth Treaty between the early European colonists and the Native Americans of that land. The artist Hicks was a Quaker Christian who believed that the revelation light of Christ should break down barriers between humans and enable them to live together in peace. The sort of peace that Isaiah prophesied for the final messianic kingdom. I think the painting, The Peaceable Kingdom, speaks well to us Canadians at a time when we are grieving over the wrongs done to First Nations children in our residential schools. The suffering of those little ones leaves us with much to amend for and many to heal. But the tragedy should also urge us to look forward to the much better and more righteous days of the Jesse Branch and to the age of peace among all peoples of the world and calm happiness even among the animals. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for your great plan of salvation. And we thank you for this revelation through your servant Isaiah about the world that you are making for us. Father, we, uh, we marvel at, Lord, uh, the creation that uh, you have in store for us, that new worldly order that we look ahead to by faith and through your word. We uh, marvel at the, the peace, the righteousness, Lord, the, the calm and the quiet that will uh, prevail in that kingdom, not only among people, but also among your creatures, the animals. Father God, we uh, thank you for this revelation. And we thank you for this plan that you have made for humankind. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us a place in this uh, new creation through your word and through uh, our faith in Christ Jesus, your Son and our Savior. And Father God, I pray that uh, this hope, this vision of the future, this uh, Lord, a bright new world to look forward to will inspire us and encourage us to uh, remain faithful to our Savior and to continue walking in his way and to uh, be obedient to his word and to his will. And Father God, may we even now, uh, Lord, bring the peace and righteousness and order of that future world into our own lives and to our own uh, uh, families and to our own uh, community, O oh Lord, by, uh, Lord, living as uh, your Son and uh, our Savior, by, uh, Lord, uh, acting peacefully towards our neighbors and uh, towards, uh, Lord, uh, those that uh, we work alongside and towards those who, uh, Lord, uh, 
uh, need our help and care also. Father God, uh, may we be like Jesus, and may we be peacemakers, and uh, Lord, may we show people, Lord, by our own lives, what your glorious future looks forward to. And uh, Father God, I pray that you will do this work of grace within us, and again, I ask that you fill us with the hope of uh, that, uh, Lord, uh, blessed age to come. And so I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
amen. And so we wait upon the Lord to come. God bless you, and I pray you have a, a good week, a happy week, and a safe week also. Amen.